listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Dr. Drew, board certified internist, addiction medicine specialist. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. And it is my uh, pleasure to welcome back to the show Tony and Wayne from Static X. Uh, it's our pleasure to be welcomed back. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, I'd like to uh, say th- thank you for uh, having the pleasure of me welcoming you back to the show. It's a pleasure. The uh, new CD is called uh, Machines. It is out. It's shipped gold, which is uh, nice. Is that, that means the record stores wanted enough of them for it to go gold before you ship them? You are correct, sir. Yeah. And do they eat those if they don't sell them? Not that they wouldn't, but... I don't think so. They end up uh, either going back or in a cutout bin somewhere. So so they are careful about how many they order. Well, what I'm saying is... Let's send them back. What I'm saying is, is can I, well, like, can, like, what if a record shipped gold, they didn't sell as many as they thought they were going to sell, and then they gave them back? Well, here's, here's you the, lose your here's gold the classic, status? Here's the classic yeah. example. The... Uh, Remember when uh, Kiss, they all put out their own solo records? And they all shipped gold. Yeah. Right. And, and they then, ended up in cutout bins. Right. Right. I think they basically sell, they people, sell squat. Yeah. They, don't, right. they don't then lay claim to being a gold record. They wouldn't. No. Well, but this is gold anyway, right? Uh, of course it will. Uh, shipped I think, gold. I think it's enough. close. I think it's yeah. close. I don't think it actually shipped gold, but very close. Yeah. First CD went platinum, I'm uh, reading here, which is very nice. And i got to believe we had uh, some small part in that drew having them on the love line of that course. way oh yeah sure <laughs> oh, absolutely yeah. <laughs> uh we will uh, i'll give you some uh, dates and we'll uh, hear something off uh off the new cd and all that stuff you guys are doing the uh family values tour uh yeah yep. yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. we're not sure when yet um it's mid-october yeah so it starts I, yeah I, I think it ends in la around thanksgiving yeah what yeah. are we in are we in like a year four for that I mean, sounds right. Aren't these new, it, Drew? You know these tours we keep thinking are brand new. Yeah, that are going into their eighth and ninth year. Yeah, pops. Yeah. I mean, doesn't that, that freak you out a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, wasn't wasn't Family Values? Wasn't that just like uh, Corn from about uh, four or corn, five years I think ago? Corn did it like two two years. And did then, they uh, start it? Yeah, I, I guess so. They still uh, like own the tour type of deal, I think, mm. and they still have like. You know, say and who's on the tour. What happened to Corn? They never come around here anymore. No, they're they're coming out. I talked to their uh, manager at uh, some uh, at the Weenie Roast, and uh, they're coming out with a new CD, or they're going in the studio soon, and then they'll come in here. I, I, I don't know. I haven't heard from them. I haven't seen them uh, too much. All right, so Static Very X hiding. here. Uh, we'll hear something off the new CD. I'll give you some uh, dates coming up where you can find them in a uh, city or town near you. And uh, we'll take some phone calls. Dustin? Yo, what up, dog? You're 21. Oh, boy. Yeah, uh, I made up my question, man, but uh, I do got a question for you, though. Okay. Like, like I smoke a lot of weed, man. And right. I want to know, like, what's that, gonna do, what's that going to do to me in, like, 20 years, man? 20 years of daily pot? What's that going to do to you? Yeah. Well, you nothing, but a regular guy <laughs> would feel the effects of it. I don't believe Dustin can sink any lower. Well, what, uh, like with any addiction, Dustin, what will happen is they'll start being mounting consequences in your life. Now, typically what happens is people get depressed with this drug. The sort of the history of marijuana dependency is it works for a while, then it stops working, and then you start getting depressed, then you smoke more to try to deal with the depression, since that's really why you've been using the pot in the per- first place, is to try to regulate your feelings. Well, I mean, uh, but like when I was young, like a few years ago, I used to drink a lot, and I used to get in a lot of trouble, and ever since I started smoking bud, I ain't been in no trouble. Well, that's, that's, that's fine. A, that's a separate issue. We, we've always, was it House of Pain? Who are the guys that we were, we were post? Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill. Yeah. That's right. Cypress Hill made that case for us here a couple of times. They were all hopped up when they were younger, and now they look like... Uh, Right, they're relaxed. You have to poke them with a stick to get them going. They're like, be real, it's like, um, I'm going to rape you and murder you tomorrow. <laughs> i got some TV to watch tonight. <laughs> yeah. But you'll that. start accelerating the use, you'll get more depressed, you'll switch back to alcohol or find something like speed or speed. All right, but, but given a choice between a, a young uh, hooligan like Dustin, and by the way, how do you get the name Dustin? You made that up too. Must be like Angel Dust or yeah. something. Uh, between it's spelled all funny too. Right. Right, there's some apostrophe right. and at the end, <laughs> but but between him being loaded and him being stoned, you're going to pick stoned every time, between right? Alcohol and pot. Yeah, yeah, you've made yeah. that point. Of course, reasonably. it yeah. subdues you. Yeah, it, it's 
it's not an aggressive drug. But maybe the, you would you know certainly two evils. You don't want him. You wouldn't want him on speed or cocaine. That's no, for sure. No, not at all. I remember once I heard this story about a boxer who got his title stripped from him because uh, he drug tested after the fight. They found traces of marijuana mm-hmm. in his system, and I was like, "Give the guy another belt." <laughs> I mean, if this guy had traces of THC, it, whether he was getting baked, on, you know, on the way to Madison Square Garden, or maybe he just smoked a little weed earlier in the week, anyway, you slice it. Come on, give the guy another belt. You, you know what I mean? I mean, like that's going to enhance your performance. That's, that's- Imagine being stoned and going 12 rounds. Right. I'm wearing a weight belt. Uh, Colleen? Hi. Okay, it's not just me. It's my friend Laura, too. All right. Oh, my God. All right. Hey, Laura. Um, basically, our friend uh, Lindsay, yeah. we're really worried about her because she's doing... Wait, she, she's not... She can't hear this, can she? Like, the guy said he was going to call her, but, like, can she hear this? Uh, I don't think... You, have you called her yet, the girlfriend? No, no. no. He, he's talking to her right now. So. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. So you better talk while he's talking to her. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, basically, like, we're really worried about her because she goes to, like, a tanning bed, like, every like, single every day. Single, like, for, like, a really long time, for, like, 30 minutes. And she does, like, a whole lot of other, like, really self-destructive, like, behaviors. Like, she's, like, we think she's anorexic, maybe, like, possibly bulimic. She, like, compulsively exercises. Like, all right. Have you, have you well, confronted her? Let me her? translate this. Lindsay's hot. <laughs> Colleen and Laura Porker's. <laughs> no. And they ain't getting none. Like, Laura, Laura, stop. Laura, stop. Laura, stop. Yeah, don't, don't even engage Adam, Laura. Just relax. Come on. She's skinny and tan. Let him go. break. How no, no. bad could she be? Listen, uh, no, 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 that's have, not true, though. Have, have you guys brought this up to her? Well, see, okay, this is the thing. She's, like, she put on a little weight, and she's, she's well, worried about it. And she's hey, hey Colleen, Laura, yeah. have, you, have you brought this up to her? Yeah. And what does she say? She's like, oh, well, everybody dies anyway. And we're like, oh. Oh, boy. Well, well uh, she's, she is she single? What? <laughs> Is she single? Tony's interested. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, is there any adult you could talk to that might get her some help? Well, no, but but that's not even, like, the main problem. The main problem is that there's this guy who she, like, met on the Internet, and, um, like, he went to the school she goes to now. But, but he got kicked out for some, like, mysterious reason that no and one knows about. He got kicked out the year before she came. She's 16. He's 19. He's a knife thrower. What? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. No, he, he's 19, and he got kicked out of high school? No, 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 no. no. He's nice got, now. He got, got, wait a minute. You're supposed to get kicked out after. <laughs> <laughs> he got kicked out like two years ago. I see. Right. Okay. Well, so he may be that's a trouble graduating. Maker. Right. So anyway, they met online and like she's, he wanted to meet her for pizza or something. So we we're like, okay, we don't think it's a good idea. So then now we we're talking to her online like a little while ago and she's like, yeah, he actually made reservations for a dinner cruise. And Listen, are her parents available to be spoken to or are they, are they sort of a pain in the neck? They're not Well, available. they're like divorced and... Yeah. Yeah, her okay. dad's in like Hawaii with his girlfriend. I and think. how about mom? Is she available? I think um, she like works all the time. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Does her crotch smell at all? <laughs> no. Well, let's try to help. Come on. Well, they're just talking so much we're, smack no, about but, her. But they're worried about her. Yeah, it, they're it sounds they're, like they're worried smack, about her in a kind of catty way, though. Wouldn't you say? No, we're no, really not. We're really no, not. look, I yeah. know this sounds bad. Like we're jealous of her because she's like thin and ten, but it's really not like that. Like I promise. Like okay. Are uh, you guys have boyfriends? Well, I did, but he moved to Texas. Shocking. Shocking. What? What about you, Laura? Moved, moved or fled? <laughs> no, not, no, no. <laughs> moved or, or jumped, uh, jumped, uh, chased a speeding train and jumped on the back of it. Uh, no boyfriends between the two of you? What? No, not with you. Oh, I'm floored. All right, Shocking. Well, here's what you guys need to know. You can't change her behavior, okay? I know, but I know. We're just worried about, like, what's going to happen tomorrow night. Like, we with don't this want guy? her to be killed or anything. Because mm-hmm. she's going in the same car with this guy. Oh, that's bad. I know. Can't like, you alert some adult to this? Can't you tell someone so no, she's? I don't know, know who but to like, tell. like, we don't want to tell our parents because, like, I mean, that may be important to tell them. Why yeah. is she? Why is she so desperate? I, I don't know. She, she's <laughs> acting out. She's acting. It's all part of that sort of syndrome, right? She's yeah. acting out sexually. She's acting out aggressively. Oh. She's acting out with eating disorder. Okay. Why don't Why don't you guys? Um, why don't you uh, chaperone her on the date, like we a tried, trailer in a golf cart or that something? That she, well, she, she jump in the like trunk of the car, right? She has this friend who, like, met some guy online. Now they're, like, in love or something, apparently. So, like, she, I don't know, her friend, like, is advising her to do this. Oh, all right. We were, we were able to get Lindsay on the phone here. All right. How do we do this, Drew? Can we kill us? We don't, I, I, hold still, girls, oh please. <laughs> Did either one of you think I'm cute, by the way? I do. I think you are so cute. I listen right. to you all the time. Fine. Okay. You're out of the doghouse. <laughs> how do we get Lindsay on? Sure, let's put them in hold and talk to Lindsay. Put Lindsay on the bottom rung there. there, there really? There, yeah. Really? Hey, Lindsay? Lindsay? All right. Lindsay, are you there? Yes. There she okay. is. We have uh, your friends uh, Colleen and Laura on the line. Mm-hmm. 
they're worried about you. You're meeting up with some guy tomorrow night you've never met, and he's mysteriously been thrown out of a school, and you met on the internet, right? Mm, well, yeah. But I have friends that know him. You, you do? Yeah. They've met him in prison? No. No. <laughs> don't you think it's a little bit dangerous to, to really just sort of, sort of suddenly go out with someone you don't know is an adult and you're 15? I'm not 15. I'm almost 17. Almost 17. I beg your pardon. Oh, that's different. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, she's full grown. And what, what friends of yours uh, know him? Um, well, we go to, like, a really small private school, and um, we have, like, big sisters and little sisters and stuff, and my big sister went out with him. All right. What'd she say about him? He's a sophomore. Wait, what did she say about him? Oh, she's still friends with him, but she's she already left her college, so I can't get in touch with her. And he was kicked out of your school, is that right? He wasn't kicked out. He left for personal reasons. What were those personal reasons? He raped someone. <laughs> no. <laughs> a knife throwing yeah. accident again? <laughs> I don't. I don't know what they were. All right. So okay, you know the guy sort of then. Well, I don't know. I never met him. Aren't you a little worried about that? I I don't. I'm usually, like, not the per- kind of person to do this, but, like, I don't know. I really... Well, Lindsay, take, do, take some sort of safeguard. Now take some pepper spray. And what about, uh, what about the eating disorder? What's going on with that? Is that mom walked in? What? What about the eating disorder? What eating disorder? Do you got something going on in that department? <laughs> not really. Not really? Just sort of? Do you ever purge? All right, hold on, uh, hold on. Her mom, I, I think her in. mom, like, came in. Yeah. This is going on for 20 minutes, right. Drew. I right. can't handle this All anymore. Right. Do you really care? I care, but I don't know if we can do much. You know? Uh, look, I don't take this the wrong way, but so a 16 year old chick gets snuffed. You never <laughs> met her before. <laughs> oh you know what I'm saying? It happens for, every day. If you're lucky, it'll show up on the news tomorrow. Right. All right. It's not so like it's, you're going to do any time. It's better than what we had thought. Right, she kind of knows the guy. She knows who knows the guy. Right. She, you know, she. Somebody, the, her friends need to get her to someone who can take care of her. The eating disorder is not going to get better without treatment. Right. And they can't change it. And they got to get her or uh, find an adult beautiful. who can leverage her in. Tony and Wayne are uh, here, by the way, from Static X. Uh, Adam. Yeah. You're 15. Yep. What's up? Uh, I got two things. First, I want to ask for yours and Drew's uh, blessings. Because I'm getting married sometime around Christmas. Mazel tov. <laughs> yeah, how do you, you pull that off at 15? Oh, uh, one of the one of the parents on either side has to sign. Just one. Yeah, just the other commits suicide. Huh? Wow. Well, only one. The other can't sign. protest. <laughs> the other one really. The other one really doesn't have to. Wow. So who signed? Hers or yours? Oh, we're, we're not married yet, but uh, my dad's going to sign after right. he gets out of jail. Oh, oh, oh shocking. Thoughtful of him. <laughs> oh. Dad, I need a favor. When are you paroled? Oh. <laughs> okay, January. Hey, no, Dad, that'll work. I'll post bail if you uh, <laughs> do this little favor for me. <laughs> Adam, what's the Dad, hurry you with? want a carton of cigarettes and some porn? All right. Yeah, man. Good. I'm glad I got your attention. Now listen up, Pops. Adam, what's the, what's the hurry? Why marriage? <laughs> Because I'm in I'm in love with her and she's in love with me and just one night I try right. now, dude. Say, you're 15. Hey, no, I know, but why waste your teens single? You know exactly. You, you best to tie the knot, get started. Who is she running away from? Start a family. She's running away from nobody. Oh please. I'm going to see. I'm me see my mom. She's somewhere in Florida and. My dad's in prison, and my stepdad kicked me out the house, so I hopped a train to Georgia, staying Whoa. with friends. Oh, my God. Wow. And, and um, hey, can you hop trains now? Can you still do that? Well, I didn't, I, I didn't hop a train. I, I paid for a ticket. Oh, I see. <laughs> you can still hop trains. I used to do that over on Main Street. And, and uh, oh, Main. And so your dad, what was he, what's he in prison for? Uh, being an idiot. Uh, he was driving on a suspended license, fake drive-out tag, no proof of insurance, and a pr- probation violation from 12 years yeah. earlier for passing bad checks. Like I said, probation violation. Right. And he was speeding. Okay. You see, your dad's kind of an idiot. And yeah. he, he'll be out soon? Kind of an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he'll be out in like uh, October or something like that. That was the first well, no, no wonder he's signing this damn thing. Right. <laughs> that was the first encouraging thing Adam said, by the way. 
Yeah. But, you know, Adam... Indi- in righteous indignation at his father's behavior. A- Adam sort of sounds like he, his mind functions pretty well, and he, he sounds like he's got his head screwed on okay for someone who's been through what he's been through. Wait till you hear what my second question is. All, All right. Go ahead. Uh, I have this kind of thing, uh, like, piercing thing. Right. I've got, like, a crap load of piercings and things like that, and I love to pierce myself. Right. I mean, you know, my legs and on my arms and things like that. Pierce or mutilate? Like you cut, yeah. You're cutting. Yeah, and, uh, like, the other night I was, like, at a party and burnt, <laughs> burnt like, six cigarettes out of my arm. Okay. All right. And I want to know what, like, j- what's, like, my drive or whatever. What, do you, what are you doing with that? The, there's There are various theories about that. Um one is uh, one way to think of it is that your brain has all these overwhelming feelings it's carrying around and doesn't have any way to manage them. And when you re- they really start coming to the surface, one of the things you can do to avoid having them or to manage them is to distract yourself. And I, and I suspect the, the other part of this is that you've been through these, some very, very intense experiences in your life. Yeah. And in order, the way your brain chemistry alters from that trauma... Sometimes people will use arousal as a way of managing feelings, so these feelings of the trauma don't surface. Yeah, I masturbate a lot. <laughs> That's so you were sexually abused too. Oh no. Oh, what about my uh, no ashtray theory? What's that? There just wasn't an ashtray around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, know it's simple yeah. thinking, no, but that's good, that's good. my that's well, the way you know, my um, people are. You got to do something with it. When yeah. I was young, I thought scars looked cool. Yeah. So I used to just like do stuff like that because I thought it looked cool. Oh, I got another question. Hey, hey, Adam. Yeah. Yeah, we don't got enough time, but look. Can you, can yeah, okay. Real N- quick. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Hear. Yes. Uh, Come on, quick. Drew, do we do we want to spend five quick. minutes on every mother well, effing call? Some tough calls so far tonight. Go ahead. Quick. All right. I just want to know if uh, maybe sometime I could like come on the air and help you guys out for like five or ten minutes sometime. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, genius. Okay. No. <laughs> no. No. You kidding? And um, take care I'm of your sorry, life. Man. Stay long care of your life. We got a lot of stuff you're dealing with here. All right, look, don't get your girlfriend pregnant. Do whatever you want. Don't get anyone pregnant. Oh, don't I made get, a promise my step. Don't get I addicted. Him a grandfather before you. Is don't funny. get addicted to anything either. You're going to have a tendency to go towards stuff just the way you're going towards the cutting and the burning and all that. That's right. If you yeah, can just stick to the cutting and the burning. That's right. Focus <laughs> on the cutting and your burning. Stay. Don't if you, if this kid cannot get on to something, booze, heroin, whatever, and not get anyone pregnant in the next three to five years, it'll be. I will consider that a coup, triumph, Success. triumph. That's right, absolutely. Luke, yeah, you're 17. That is correct. You're on with Static X. You're a virgin, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, always hear that voice. <laughs> I know that virgin voice. Yeah, I know. I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, hearing it now. Yeah, well, my question is, what exactly is the base system in regards to sex? Like baseball? Right. I've heard many different points on it, and this, I want to get a confirmation. I think it's changing. I I think yeah. I think we may have to I it's changed from when we were mm, baseball playing age. Oh yeah. Yeah, we there's now two bases between first and second. Yeah, I know. You'd have to add we have to add more bases on the diamond. Have to make it a uh, octagon. Well, it's no longer a diamond. Base? I don't think baseball uh, applies anymore. First, all right. Well, let's see if we can agree on this. Uh, first base is kissing with the tongue. You know, like making out. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little uh, touchy feely stuff too. See, you are coming up first base no, 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 first base. If you just got to first base, you can't be doing more in kissing. No, over the clothes, though. Yeah. Over the clothes? Touching over the clothes. And that, that's all involved in first base? Tony? Mm, I, I'd buy that. Tony's a virgin. He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows Yeah, uh, that's me. I'm a virgin. <laughs> so, all right. Hey. All right. Ki- here's the deal. P- yeah. Kissing with, with the tongue... And uh, maybe a little hand rubbing around, but nothing specific. Yeah. No, uh, no nipple flicking. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, second base, that's uh, boobs, that's up the shirt. Oh, yeah? Hold on. Do you go down the shirt or up the pants? No, down the pants, up the shirt. It's up the shirt, yeah. down the pants. I asked a group of kids. Yeah. Uh, I was in a large group of adolescent kids down in Houston. I asked them to put put these things on the base for me. Yeah. And they put oral sex on second base. No, they did not. Yes, they did. No, Drew, you love to do that. One they guy did. said it. No, no. Drew, thank God I know you well enough not to listen to you anymore. The so, room so, let, so let me no. guess. The second base was oral. Third was uh, vaginal, and then home run was anal. <laughs> no, no. Anna was also off the diamond. It didn't That's count. That's dugout. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they call it the dugout. Yeah, 
<laughs> you should see me throw a tantrum in the dugout, throwing the bats around, tossing the Gatorade cooler. It's out of control. <laughs> All right, no, wait a minute. Luke, yeah. don't listen to Drew. So, wait, so second base is close Se- off? Second base is uh, boob. Well, listen, you got to combine a few activities on some of these bases. Yeah, you have to. Second, second base is mainly about the boob. Yeah. Uh, feeling, maybe a little, a little nibbling pops, and all that kind pops. of stuff. I think, I think you're way behind on that one. Well, look, <laughs> listen. Home run has to be intercourse. Yes. Yeah. It has yeah, to be. Because that's, that's so, the, so symbolically, gotta, it needs okay. to be that. Yeah. That's the so only one that's actually Go back from there. Right. right. I'm going back from there. So third base has to be oral. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go back. And, and second base has to be feeling. It could underneath be Could course. be underneath. Could be, yes. Could be downstairs. Yeah. Well, I never thought of second base as hand in the panty. These kind it of w- it was we okay, then. so maybe it did that, and then all the weird stuff, you know, the dirty Sanchez and stuff like that. <laughs> that's that's all that's off extra the diamond. Innings. That's right. <laughs> all right, so Luke, uh, in re- in review, yeah, uh, first base uh, making out with some uh, hand wandering outside of the clothes. All right. Uh, second base uh, hands wandering everywhere. Okay. On on bare skin. Third base, uh, you got the uh, oral sex. Got it. And uh, home run, of course, is the uh, actual intercourse. All right, but what about the uh, the third party stuff? Like, uh, like. Uh, oh, I mean, like when you got to go to the bullpen? <laughs> yeah, that kind that, of stuff. That's still, it's all. Whenever, whatever, whenever you get past uh, home plate, you're just past it. You're, Everything you're, past you're that. You're in a new game. That. It's a different game. Right. No longer baseball. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. It's football. It's, 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 <laughs> cricket. it's a game cricket. Of, it's a game of yards from there. <laughs> Sonia? Yeah, hi. Hey, you're 22. You're on a static X. I am? Yeah. What's up? Um, yeah, I'm, it's hard to believe. I'm on my yeah. cell phone. I'm, like, in my car. Anyway, um, I was diagnosed with uh, hyperthyroidism about, like, four years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, I never really did anything about it. I was on Tapazole for a while, and uh, I went off it. And I saw my recent endocrinologist, and she put me in the hospital, and I was treated for that. And so now I'm like in the middle, like I'm not on synthroid yet. Have you had a abla- have you had ablation yet? I'm sorry. Have you had the ablation yet? What's the ablation? The radio- radioactive iodine. Yeah, that's why I was in the hospital. So you had that, and now you're on the way down. Now on the way down, and I'm starting to gain weight. So I'm like working out a lot, and I'm really watching what I'm eating. So I weighed myself like the other day, and I weighed like seven pounds over what my normal weight was. Hmm. Yeah, what what and you gain you gain weight with the thyroid condition. Well, you really right? don't. Right. You you know you don't. You don't. You you I don't. You, you can you lose. Don't? Listen, hey, listen, you can lose weight with your hyperthyroid. Yeah. Okay, and so you may be gaining back what you had all abnormally lost, but being hyper. I've I've always been like overweight. But being oh, I mean, right, I was or, I that's was, right. You're going on, back go to normal. I'm interested which, in this hypothyroid. Although people have this conception, this concept that it causes weight gain, it causes fluid retention more than weight gain. There can be a slight weight increase, and the medicines that they use to treat the hyperthyroidism can cause her to gain weight. So all I, right. I was going to find out what she was taking. All right. all right. Well, hold on a second. Hyper and hypo. What's the difference? Hyper is high. Hypo is low. Right. Hi- upper. Under. Right. Hyper high. Hypo low. Yeah. And then. What's the other one that always drives me insane? One means, uh, gl- you know, globally, and the other means locally. They, they're the same word, essentially. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, globally. Yeah, yeah one means everywhere, and one means uh, pinpoint. It's another medical term, but it's used, it's used uh, all over the place. We've had this discussion before. It's driving me crazy now. Really? Yes. Yeah, me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to come up with it in a second, and uh, it's going it to drives it drives me nuts when there's certain words like uh, to me push and pull shouldn't start with the same two letters. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, how many times you hit that restaurant door and smacked into it <laughs> because you didn't bother reading the last two letters, and everyone turned and looked because the aluminum frame of the thing whacked against the jam. I'd like. I'd like one to say yank and the other to say push. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't absolutely. want the same two letters. They're too close. I don't like when words sound almost alike but mean totally different things. Hey, there's push, pull, and press. Hypo and hyper. Hyper yeah, and hypo. So. Yeah, I don't like but that. Local and global. You're driving me yeah. insane now. Well, think about it. You're a smart guy. I gave you the, I gave you the clue. <laughs> it's there. One means, one, means, one means everything. The other means nothing. One <laughs> means almost nothing. The other means everything everywhere. 
Uh, let me think about it. All Is there right. questions uh, best no. left to theologists? Uh, and, and endo anyone? or, like, wait a minute. No? Well, you're getting close. I think it is something like that. No, uh, okay. What well, are we talking about? Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, let's exocrine and endocrine or something? No, you don't. You know what? Don't think too much. Just yeah. think a little bit. Right. You're thinking too much. Uh, should we take a break? Yes, please. Do we answer a question? No. Just take a break. Let's just answer it off the air. Not one. Okay. Today. Not one. Static X is uh, here. We're all going to uh, think about that last uh, 20 minutes, and then we'll get back. Hello? Is this Love Line? Call 1-800-LOVE-199. Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Drew over there. Tony and Wayne are both here from Static X. New CD, Machines, is out as we speak. And uh, we should hear something off of that. We didn't work that out, did we? Uh, yeah, this, this break. This break. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is right here. Black and white. We're going to play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. where's the CD? I oh, need the CD. Go. i got to look at the CD. Uh, all right, we'll work uh, it out. Uh, Maybe we should just play Mike. a song. No, no, no. I don't have one. You're going down no. that path. We'll work it out. Work it out. Well, I'll have somebody get one. The uh, the word that was uh, driving uh, me nuts and then Drew nuts is uh, micro and macro. Those were the two things. Micro means a small, macro means a huge. Now, too close to me to mean two opposite things. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Lauren? Hi. Uh, like uh, micro and giganto or something <laughs> like that. that. That I'll go with. Go ahead, Hi. Lauren. You're 15. Hi. Hey. I love you guys. You, who uh, you love? Static X? Uh, Adam and Drew. Oh. Well, yeah. we love Static X. No, nobody so. loves us. So now. Okay. No, I love you too, okay? Okay. No. What's your question? Well, I really like my boyfriend, and we've been going out for a while, and I we like go to this point where I'm, we're going to almost have sex, and then I get like these flashbacks of like being molested. And he gets freaked out. He thinks that I don't like him or something. He doesn't know. I don't want to. I don't want to tell him that. Uh oh. Well, how do you act during those flashbacks? I just say that I don't. I don't know. I don't want to. But you don't freak out, start sobbing, or no. get angry or anything. I'm gonna kill no, you, Daddy. I, I, I started shaking the other day, and he didn't know it was wrong. Is he? Is he kind to you when you? Get yes, like this? All right, well, that's nice. But he just, think, he just thinks it's him. Like, I, think him. I think you ought to tell him. I think you ought to tell him. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, look, I how, lo- how long out? have you been with him? I don't think it'll freak him out. I do. How long? Uh, a couple months. Mm. Okay. And how old is he? He's 17. Are you getting any treatment for this? Um, I'm in therapy and I'm Good. on Therazone. Okay. It's not well, really working. Well, have you told your therapist about these flashbacks? Um, No. You haven't told the therapist about what happened to you. We really, we don't really talk about that. Lauren, you got, you got to bring that out. Okay, it's important. He, he doesn't know about the molestation. Who? Your she, boyfriend. she, the therapist. She, the therapist. Yeah, he does. But he, we just, we, I don't know. We don't talk about that. You, I know. Yeah. I, it's all, mm-hmm. all right. All right. All right. Well, that that should be the uh, new topic. Yeah, that's what you go in there with this week because you. And like every time that happens, I, I think about cutting myself again, and I don't want to end up back. And but this we, this is something I was talking about ten minutes ago, which is this post traumatic stress reaction when these things overwhelm you. Your brain does whatever it can to manage them, and it uses arousal. Now, the last caller thought I meant sexual arousal. I mean any kind of arousal, cutting, extreme activities, rage. All those things will distract you from the from the uh, or using drugs will distract you from the flashbacks. Yeah. And you need to learn how to manage those those affect states, those feelings. Who molested you? My sister's father. Your sister's father. Is that my your sister's father? Your stepfather. No, he was my mother's boyfriend. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, your mom sounds like a dynamite lady. Oh, she really is. Yeah, I'd really oh, yeah. like to have a nice sit down with her. And you know, then my, I have my alcoholic crooked father. Right. All right. Good time. So, so plenty of reason, plenty of stuff to talk to the shrink Let's about. Go around the camp. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. All right. So get into that stuff. Uh, I would discuss it with the shrink about whether to discuss it with the boyfriend All right. or not. All right. Fair enough. All right. Okay. All right. Get into that because I, I know everyone's into that truth will set you free stuff, but. I don't know. Seventeen-year-old Duke could get pretty freaked out over this guy. I, I of thing. think. I, I think he, the guy's ego is so delicate. Until he figures out, really understands, it's not about him. He's going to be freaking out. No. And when she tells him it's sexual abuse, he, he's not going to really understand what that means. Even he's going, oh, good. At least not me. No. That's going to be his no, take. He's not going to say good. <laughs> oh, a seventeen-year-old no, no, He's going to be thinking, ah, oh, great. And that means I'm not going to get any. He's going to be freaked. Maybe. Yeah. He's going to be freaked out. I, I think he would. I think right now he just thinks she's overwhelmed with his, you know, sexual prowess. You know, like, you know, like she's uh, swooning in front of it's Elvis so or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't say anything. Good times. Good times. Joe? Yes. You're 17. 
Yes, I am. What's up? Uh, my girl and I were planning on having uh, sex and uh, during her period. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering what the chances were of her actually getting pregnant. Mm, what do you mean the chances? You may give you a number. Of the <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I mean, what do you want? Is, Vegas odds? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would it be almost the same if she wasn't? No, it's not the same as when most women ovulate. But you can't tell when she's ovulating, so we can't tell you what the odds well, are. Well, what if she's right on her period? Oh she, man, she can still get pregnant. I'm just picturing. Uh, remember, they have it's two. Not, it's not ovaries. likely. It's not likely, but it's possible. I'm just picturing that uh, Thousand Island that's going to come out of her uh, <laughs> after he's done. There's no reason to get ketchup on your hot dog. Oh. Oh. That's all I'm saying. Make sure if, if you do this and you do not use a condom, oh, you, you, you when get that mayonnaise hits the ketchup, boy. <laughs> uh, you get that morning after pill, okay? Um, and I get that through the Planned Family, right? Planned Parenthood, any doctor, you just take it with. The sooner you take it after intercourse, the more effective it is. Again, the idea is there's a three-day window you can suppress the egg from being released, and the sperm don't get to get so just, to it. Just to be safe, use a condom while going in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for, on multiple levels, be safe, right? Okay. All right. All right. Hey, you. you're, hey, Joe, you're pretty hardcore for 17. <laughs> I mean, are you glad she's on her period, or do you no, kind of like no, it? Just kind of pop. No, I think or, the deal is just so horny you don't care. I think the the yeah. window of opportunity has opened, and she happened to be on her period. Yeah, so well, just doesn't... bad timing, but right, hey, there you go. Go. it'll it'll work. It'll have, work. Have you been having sex with her? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Yeah. You're ready to keep pushing on. All right. Are you gonna go okay. down on her? Uh, mm, don't think so. Earn your red wings, buddy. <laughs> All right. All uh, right, you guys are really awesome, man. I, I listen to you guys all the time. All right, good times there, Joe. All right, thanks. All right, and then put some uh, Visqueen down, some plastic or something, though, all right? All right. Oh. You don't want to mess things up. Visqueen? Visqueen. It's, uh, it's like a drop cloth? Rolled plastic, I yeah. See, yeah. Construction, you know, from old construction days. Mm, Big rolls. Rolls. I'm sure a 17 year old knows what Visqueen is. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Visqueen, yes. Miss Beasley? Yes, yeah, should I use a micro or macro amount of the Visqueen of said Visqueen? Erica? Hi. <coughs> hey, you're 19. You're on a static X. Yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to say, Adam, I am not obsessed with you, and I do not write your name on my shoes. All right. Well, careful, careful. Oh, oh, I was afraid of that. we got to move on. <laughs> uh, we, we, we really do. Wait a minute. Did she have a question for static X? Yeah, but so does this one. All right. Now, let her talk to static <laughs> nah, yeah. Erica? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Talk I'm to sorry. Static I still X. Love you. That's fine. Oh, f- okay. um. <laughs> oh my God. You know, hold on a second. <laughs> this is awful. I wish, I wish in life that I had a drop button. You know, just a big button I could carry around, and, and you know, because it, it gets everyone in line immediately. Like you, you'd be talking to your girlfriend, and you'd be going. Uh, so what movie you want to see? And she'd be like, I want to see the Ivor and Merch. And, and you'd be going, like, your finger would start going towards you. And you'd go, no, no, okay, no, de- Death Race uh, 3000. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. It snaps everyone back. Yeah. Basically, Adam wants to be the Queen of Hearts. Yeah. Right. The, the yeah. trap door button. Yeah. Yeah. Off with his head. Right. And you know what's great, too, is you put him on, you, you hit that drop button, and you let him simmer for about five, ten seconds, and you get back to him. To- totally new attitude. It'd be great. Like you'd be like. Why don't you just become a dog trainer, an animal trainer? It'd be so gratifying for you. It'd be great. You yeah. go, you go like a body shop. You get estimated. The guy'd be like, "That's ah, eighteen hundred bucks." You'd see the finger <laughs> above a thousand. Uh, 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 Four hundred for free. It'd be great. Drew, give me one of those. Rig me up one of those uh, drop buttons for life, would you? Erica, go ahead. Okay, I was just wondering, um, Static X. Are you guys going on tour soon? Or uh, yeah, they uh, got some dates coming up. Where Where do you live? Uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, yeah, we're going to be around this area. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you, can you uh, get from uh, Santa Barbara out to L.A.? Yeah. All right. Also, uh, that's where we'll be. Also going to be in San Francisco on the uh, 30th. Okay. Of this month? No. Uh, ne- what are we in? This, uh, we it's in August. We're in August. Yeah. We'll what be, is uh, it? Seven or eight? Six, eight. 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 Oh, yeah, eight. Yeah, August 30th. Cool. They're going to be at the Fillmore in San Francisco. You okay. want to drive up there? Yeah. Okay. Or, uh, we'll be in L.A. on uh, September 1st. Okay, cool. All right. All right. See you there. Thank you. Good times. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. Let's talk to... No, no, it's time you want to hear a song from yeah, Static X? time. All right. This uh, is uh, off of the uh, new CD, Machines, and this one is called Black and White.
here from Static X. Machines is the name of the CD. Shipped gold, thank you. And uh, we'll hear uh, something else off of that CD in the uh, 11 o'clock hour. Now it's time to get back to the phones and speak to uh, Anna. Anna? Hello? What's yeah. up? Oh, hi. Um, hey. My question, or not a question, actually. I was going to tell Dr. Drew that um, when I went into the clinic, uh, the county clinic here in Sacramento, they... Uh, they said that I couldn't have the morning after pill because I didn't need it since I'd been on my period. Since you had had your period or since you had sex while on your period? No, I'd had sex while on my period. Huh. And I went in asking for the morning after pill and they said that, that I didn't need it and they wouldn't well, give it to me. That That's a call that some doctors might make. I, I wouldn't be willing to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just... I'm just telling you that that's, I mean, that's what happens. It's okay. not always the that's case. Interesting. Yeah. You know? It's interesting. I'm glad you called. And uh, I, I, I would still encourage someone to take it. I think it's a, it's a protection, and it's a protection worth taking. And I don't think that having had or being on your period necessarily makes it safe for you. So, What is the risk to taking the morning after pill? I don't mean... I don't mean... You know what? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, you got to weigh them against it, each it's other. Right. It's been used worldwide from over a couple of decades, for what, a decade and a half, and has been, it's one of the only medications you can point that's had zero side effects. It's been a zero negative outcome from that drug. Really? Which is amazing. Yeah, now, and now, now, on the other hand, we just got a fax here, an email, rather, that I thought was interesting. This, this is interesting. It sort of highlights how different men and women are, because I never would have thought of this. I'll tell you the interesting part. It's not going to be interesting. I know. you think it's interesting. I know. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that's I the fascinating know. It's not part. Be interesting. All right. She took the morning after the pill at the end of April. I was wondering if you take the morning after the pill, does it mess up your whole cycle the rest of the year? Because my, cycle, my period used to come in the middle of the month. Now it becomes the beginning. And she's freaked out that it moved her period in the month at a different time. Right. And you wonder if that... You know, bothers women. That, that's a. I don't wonder though. I know you wonder. Like one wonders. One not, wonders. Not this one. But you're right. It's not very interesting. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. But it's uh, it's informative, and we try to be at least that on this show. Yeah. Lance, you really just didn't hear what I said, huh? That's all right. Lance, you're 25. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey, Tony. Hey, Wayne. Hey. Hey, Adam. First, I wanted to tell you, man. I'm probably your biggest like gay fan here in Dallas, man. I think you're awesome. Thank you. As you know, I love the gays. You do, I know. I uh, like to be the unofficial uh, king of, of the gays. <laughs> if you guys... Do you have a king? Is there an old king? Uh, th- uh, there are a lot of queens. Queen of queen, the gays? Yeah. Very few kings. That's the okay. point. You want to be the one king. I would like to be the king of the gays. All right, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I guess I should probably start out by uh, giving you a little background information, which will help out a little bit. I'm a recovering addict, uh, recovering alcoholic, and a recovering sex addict, which will probably Very explain some of my behavior. Yes, yes. Oh, wait, uh, recovering in what sense? Tell me what you've done. Uh, in like what sense? Sexually? Like, like, are you are you going to SA? Do you have an SA sponsor? Yeah, SAA and AA. And you have a sponsor in each of those areas? Uh, I have a sponsor in AA and working on getting a sponsor in SAA. Okay, and how long have you been sober from drugs? I've been sober now for three months on the 28th. What drug? From alcohol and drugs. I, I actually haven't drank for like two years, but yeah. I had a slip on Ambien. So Ambien's been the latest drug. Yeah. What's I, your, what's I, your... I had a slip on Ambien a couple nights ago, which is I, I took three of them and I slipped in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love that Ambien. And, uh, hey, so you don't slip again. Why don't you give me whatever Ambien you have? I'll do that to you. I'll and, it's a great sleeping medication. Lance, what's your drug, drug of choice overall? Uh, it was probably alcohol. The second yeah. was cocaine. All right. Got it. So you're only three months sober here, really? Yeah. What's your longest period of sobriety? Uh, I was sober for a year and a half. When was that? That was um, about six months ago. And then All right. I got it. All right. Got it. Got All right. It. So the question is? Uh, the question is, I'm having a problem with my ex. Um, I, it's like a mixture of, like, jealousy and attachment. I'm jealous of kind of the say, progress yeah. that he's made since we've broken up and his kind of capacity to make friends and stuff, and I have a really hard time doing that. Mm. Um, I have friends and stuff in my program, but my sponsor just kind of came down on me really hard. She's a real ball buster. And she? She told, me, she told me that... She? 
No, my sponsor's a she. I'm not sure that's right. I, know, I understand why you're doing that. Yeah. But is that, is that, are you going to a gay recovery group? Yeah. And they're recommending, you, and yeah. They're recommending you get a female sponsor? Uh, for me, yeah, because there's no risk of me you know, wanting to sleep with her or anything like you that. You know what? I, I'm, I, I understand why you're doing that, and, and it sort of may be a okay stopgap measure, but in the, the role of the sponsor is really somebody to reflect back to you... Um, well, well, what's what's wrong with having a, it's, a different it's gender? Not, it's not enough of an identification. It's okay, and I understand why you're doing it, because you're a sex addict and whatnot, but you really need to be able to f- be fully reflected in that other person. Well, is she a lesbian? Yeah. Well, you're halfway home. No, it's <laughs> part dude. Just just keep that in mind. <laughs> but I, then I you're, really, part, you're part chick, so... I, we, we a, oh, I absolutely yeah. do not... It cancels out. You're right. I, I really don't let people have sponsors that are opposite sex if they're heterosexual for, for the same reasons you don't want to have one. Right. Okay. Um, same sex, but in there isn't a, there's a there's a quality to it that you really need the same sex identifying with you. All right, well let's not get mired on the I've had, genitalia like, a real here. I'm finding like male sponsors in a like gay sponsors that recognize sex addiction. Um, yes, that's uh, out. Yes, I understand. Well, let, let's get back to the question though. You, this is yeah. your ex boyfriend. You would yeah. have you would have to have that. Uh, you understand, Lance? Right. Okay. Go ahead. Ex boyfriend. Um, well, the problem is, is I can't like. We're still friends and stuff. We still live in the same apartment complex and stuff. He moved out and moved into a different apartment here in the same complex. So we see each other regularly. That's not good. But um, you just need, you need distance. That's all. You yeah. need away from Yeah, him. it's like I don't feel like we've had enough of that. Cut the ties, dude. Yeah, you, six months, cold Let turkey. Let it go. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do that. You, you, you cannot monitor the progress of your ex, a boy or girl. It's always painful. Yeah, you know what? Being friends is overrated. Oh, I have oh, to. Oh, oh, well, yeah. You don't need to It's not possible. Yeah. It's no. possible, but the first six months, it makes it very, very, very painful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is, uh, obviously you have feelings, and this person tries to uh, start a life on their own. They start dating, and then, then there's trouble. No. Yeah. You can't do it. I think somewhere in here is an intent to reconnect with him. Yeah. You think so? With the old boyfriend? Oh, yeah. I guess. Anytime one of them wants to, wants to remain friends. And especially when someone wants to monitor them. Yeah. Lance? Lance? Yeah. Uh, do you want to uh, r- get back together with this guy? No, not at all. It was like the best thing that could have possibly happened in my recovery was us breaking up. Yeah. Right. But no feelings, huh? Yeah, I mean, there's still some feelings there. I can't yeah. deny that. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. and uh, is, is Lance, is that your real name or your gay name? No, that's my real name. <laughs> oh, okay. Do they, have, do they sign gay names, like uh, Jewish names? On occasion. Yeah, because I think Lance is one of the ones they Sign. sign. <laughs> all right. All right, Lance. Good times. Good luck. All right, man. Yeah, you sound yeah. like you're doing all Keep right. Great work. Cool. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's talk to uh, Jen, who's 26. Jen. Hi. Actually, it's Jen with an S. Jen's. But um. Oh man, I've been a long time listener, you guys, and uh, Adam, you're the best, and Dr. Drew. I think you do a great service for the communities. But um, my girlfriend's on uh, Paxil, and um, I'm thinking that we're probably going to get married maybe in a year or so. And I'm just wondering, like, what type of effect that might have um, when we want to have kids. Like, does it have any effect on children or anything like that? The well, fact that she has depression or the fact that she's on Paxil? The fact that she's on Paxil and also depression. Um, she just revealed to me, at first she told me she was just depressed, but then she revealed to me that she's, like, somewhat bipolar also. All right, hold on. All right, hang on there, Jens. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's your girlfriend's name, Lisa's? Uh, no, Yvonne. No. Okay. Yvonne's? All right, hold on. Mm-hmm. Hold on, we got to take a little break. Static X is here. We'll uh, talk about Paxil depression and um, Bipolar. bipolarism and uh, what not? pregnancy and whatnot after this. Thank you. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Tony and Wayne are both here from Static X. Machines is the name of the CD. We'll hear something else uh, off of that. It's a machine. Oh, did I say machines? Yeah. yeah. Oh. You see, see what they wrote on my. Uh, oh, paper uh, it's there? not your fault. All right. Yeah. They wrote machines yeah, there. We're going to have to kick somebody's ass. Sorry. I'm going to scratch that out. There. Uh, I, won't, I won't hold it against you. Thank okay. you. Static X. Uh, we'll hear uh, some more off of that uh, in the 11 o'clock hour. I can uh, also tell you that uh, they'll be on the uh, Family Value or Values <laughs> <laughs> tour. Uh, com- uh, see, they correctly added the S to that. Coming up. And uh, you can also find them uh, alone. Or I don't know. 
Are you playing with somebody on these dates I have in front it's, of me? Uh, it's headline dates, and we have uh, a couple bands, friends of ours, uh, Apex Theory and Dead Z are also going to be on the bill, but we're headlining these shows coming up. Right. Fillmore, House of Blues in uh, Las Vegas, uh, Palace out in Hollywood, Anaheim at the uh, House of Blues out there in the uh, Cajun House in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and uh, Sunshine Theater, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Deep... Is that De Elam? Deep Elam. Elam. And uh, what the hell is Deep Elam? <laughs> I have no idea. It's a city. All right. Uh, Didn't what, they? What state? No, it's, a, it's a venue. Oh, I see. Didn't they sing Highway Star? Uh, that's in uh, Dallas, and these are all uh, coming up in the next uh, month or so for uh, Static X. All right. Now, where were we, Drew? We get back to the phones? Jens. Yeah, I wanted to uh, also mention that uh, next week, uh, System of a Down is going to be in here. Henry Rollins, mm -hmm. Jerry Manthe from uh, Survivor and Playboy, and the uh, Long Beach Dub All-Stars. So a uh, bunch of uh, our old friends coming in uh, next week. Jen? Yeah. Jens? Everybody is a repeat visitor next week. Yes, yeah. yes. Jens? Yes. All right. And uh, you're, you're, you're thinking about getting married in a year. Yeah. Your girlfriend is on Paxil. Yeah. She has a bipolar... And How did that come up that she told you she was bipolar? Um, well, she had she had told me that she was depressed um, before, and then actually her dad came out to visit recently, and she said that he was bipolar, and then I kind of was like, well, what about you? And she said, well, yes, I am also. I am or I might be? I, I am. Okay. She's, she's, Is she on something besides Paxil? Um, not that I know of. Does she get manic at all on you? Um, she has, like, um, it's kind of a weird story. We, like, we dated in high school and then broke up, and then, like, um, about a year um, later, or, well, I'm sorry, um, about ten years later, actually, we got back together, and she said, like, in the time period before she called me, like, she couldn't sleep, like, uh -huh. for almost about a month solid. Right, okay, so she was manic then. Yeah. Well, you have to be careful with people bipolar that go on antidepressants because sometimes the antidepressants themselves can precipitate a manic episode. Mm -hmm. Your concern about pregnancy is is appropriate. You really shouldn't be on antidepressants during pregnancy. There are okay. none that are completely safe for children, but they may be safe. We actually don't really know the full effect of those, so most doctors will try to avoid that. And she's got to be watched very carefully for instabilities in her mood, just also during the pregnancy as well as after the pregnancy. She'll be at increased risk of postpartum depression. Yeah. Well, what about a bipolar mom? I mean, does this get better? Yes. Well, what do you mean? I mean, it's, let, it's highly treatable. Uh, what I'm saying is she gets on her meds, uh, does a little therapy, gets in it, a better place, and then can have kids? It's a highly treatable disease, but it's, it's, it's characteristically relapsing. Okay. There will be uh, there will be so I mean like a cold it goes away. Good luck. It goes away but it comes back. All right. Let's uh geez, my like headphones herpes. are uh, for crap all of a sudden. Uh, they went south. Wait a minute, I'm gonna try plugging them back in. All right, let's talk to uh Aaron who's uh nineteen. Aaron? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Um I just I'll get to my problem. I just wanted to say like Wayne and Tony, I'm huge fans, hardcore fan of Static X. I think you guys are just the greatest. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, they're, my coming, problem, they're coming to uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, he's, coming up he's on... In Tulsa, I have though. a friend who lives in Scottsdale, and like, I think oh, he's that's in, the closest oh, you're coming to Oklahoma, so he's I might in actually Oklahoma. go. Oh. What did you read there? I, I, I read... Um, you read Tulsa, Oklahoma. Phoenix? No, no, where's... Uh, Tucson. Tucson. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking Tucson. Yeah. yeah. Tempe? No, I read Tucson. Yeah. I said the Tulsa. Tucson's too far south of Scottsdale. But, um, my, uh, well, I guess it's a problem. Your screener didn't seem to think so, which is kind of cool, but, um... <laughs> I'm uh, basically, like, addicted to Asian girls. Yeah. Who is number one? That's Minka. <laughs> you like Minka? Very nice. Do you enjoy Minka? I, I prefer Koreans, but I can live with <laughs> Me so Minka. Horny. Minka is uh, Korean. Oh, number well, then one? all the better. Yeah, number one Asian big boob queen. Oh, oh, yeah. Korean tennis pro. Pictures right. of her. Yeah, yeah but, right. Um, like, I mean, it's not... It was. I dated... My first girlfriend was Asian, and it's kind of been the way since that I kind of seek him out. And yeah. it's gotten kind of so, to the point now where like my best friend is dating an Asian girl and I've been kind of trying to break him up on purpose for like the last two months ooh. just to kind of hook up with her oh, I mean I'll cool. go out of my way like okay I'll be at a club and a good looking girl come up to me and if there's an Asian girl like sitting over there by herself or just having nothing to do with me I'll go up and uh, intentionally approach her so yeah. some hot blonde with like huge mm -hmm. cans came yeah, up oh, the I have no interest in blondes whatsoever yeah alright you, mm. you like Asians yeah, well, I just, I what? don't know if, like, that's a fixation. If well, all right, but well, probably, but what do you like about him? He, I, I don't know, you know, it's like, it's not it kind of mean, but, like, the submissiveness or the, yeah, the femininity it. that comes, you know, through. Yeah. 
Olive skin, man. I don't know. Well, what does that submissiveness do for you? What does that make you think of? What, how, why does that work for you? I, I don't really... I, this is going to sound bad. I don't like... Like, I've dated a lot of bitchy girls. Right. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. Just, and uh, right. it's just kind of like... Like, the Asians that I've dated, the girls, and the other girls that I've dated, they're more passive-aggressive about it, you know? I mean, I'm kind of passive-aggressive myself. Like, all the ones, at least in my experience, that you like... If you have an argument or something, they kind of blow it off and let it simmer. And they just, I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of control issue. But All right. What about the vagina? I, I, like I the love a- the brown vagina. You like the Asian vagina? I do, and the brown nipples. It's yeah. If your nipples are a darker color than your skin, you're good times, good times. Right. Um, I got bad news for you. My nipples are darker than my oh. skin is. So, uh, <laughs> well, it, there are exceptions gonna, to everything. We're going to be hooking up when I get out to Tulsa. <laughs> hey, you can come look me up, man. All right. All right. I like a little nipple play. I'm not ashamed of pretty passive, too. Yeah. <laughs> Very submissive. I, I want yeah, to point I'm that out. I'll call you Mr. Eddie's father. <laughs> <laughs> little uh, Mrs. Livingston humor there from the courtship of Eddie's father. Very nice. All right. And, and yet, uh, you're not a big fan of Minka. No. No, see, I don't like the big breasts. No. Also, number one. also oh. she's got a kind of an aggressive edge to her, you know what I mean? Minka? Look what she did to you uh, at that strip bar. Uh, she, just because uh, she uh, ruptured my uh, scrotum with her <laughs> shin does not make her aggressive, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lovely, lovely, lovely dynamite Asian lady. I had a uh, lovely talk with at a strip club uh, over some uh, cherry pie by Warren. Huh? Huh? How much do your boobs weigh? Huh? Yeah, it was great. That's when you first heard about the tennis <laughs> tennis history, right? Yeah, do you guys know uh, who uh, Minka is? I don't have the pleasure. Uh, no, I'm not familiar now. Number one Asian big, big boob queen. Mm-hmm. She's an Asian woman with uh, huge cans. Great porn star. Mm-hmm. She's a delight. <laughs> and uh, I had to look her up. Yeah, go look her up on the internet. Yeah. She, we, we had her in here once. Minka. Yeah. She's, Minka. Yeah. She's really, uh, really delight. But she didn't start as a, t- as a uh, pornography. Queen. Start as a uh, as a tennis instructor. Don't play tennis no more. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when you see the cans on her, and then you picture her holding anything, especially a racket, a- anything other than a, a it's penis, s- swinging, swinging a racket, mm-hmm. you, yes, you will, you will be amazed. All right, where are we going here? Did we help uh, Aaron at all? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah. Oh, he's look, whatever you like. Here's the deal. If you're into Asian women, you're in Asian women. We're not going to be able to talk you out of that. So enjoy. That's basically what we're saying. Have fun. Dude. Andrew? Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener. Great. Yeah. Um, I, got, I took trumpets like about a week ago. What is that? It's Hell's Bells. It's like a, it's like a big um, yellow plant, and like it looks like a bell. And me and a couple friends, mm. we made it like into a T. Right. Like, dude, we... Like, I'm still on it right now. It's been like a week. No, is I'm that kinda scared. trumpet? You yeah. called it? I like, took trumpet? music lessons or yeah. something. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I took trumpet when I was in yeah, elementary me too. school. <laughs> it's not Olean. Oh, oh. Dude, like, you start Oleander. tripping out too weird. Like, I had this big banner of Che Guevara on top of my bed, and, like, the guy started talking to me about the revolution. Hey, you know what? I, I did acid when I was 13, and, uh... Uh, after like the the sixth hour, uh, George Washington was talking to me from the dollar bill, dude. So it's dude, all good. That guy was telling me like things about the revolution that I didn't even know. Where did I mean really? Yeah, but know? Andrew, you're having a reaction here, okay? And just some, out. some of these plant hallucinogens that people use yeah. can go on for quite some time. Do you remember where you've been the last few days? Uh, yeah, I've been just chilling at home. So it's not like you're forgetting what's happening minute to minute. You don't know where you've been, what you've been doing. I see like flashes of light like right. once in a while. Right. But it, you're, you're just tripping. Dude. Yeah, you need to. You need to. You should see a doctor about this because this can really get take some vitamin B. Stomach yeah. or something. They what? It could like eat your stomach. No, it's just that you you can get pretty nutty and do some things that you can hurt yourself. Dude, yeah. it is weird. Hey, Andrew. What's up, Adam? You kick ass, Adam. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Sounds, you hey, were you, were you, you on um um the Family Guy? Were you the desk guy? Yeah, I was. Dude, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, well, it's better when you're really high. Dude, I was tripping out on you. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't see my face, so I was wearing a hood. And then when you touched that girl because you hated her? <laughs> yeah, oh, don't give away the ending. Come on. Dude, it already came out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I touched this girl because I hated her. Hey, Andrew. What's up, dude? What, uh... What are you junior college or what are you what are you doing? I'm a straight bum. You're not working, huh? I'm just chilling at home skateboarding all day. You graduated uh, high school. I graduated from John Glenn High. Oh, fantastic! And uh, don't your parents want you to get a get a gig, oh, move out of the house? 
bug me about getting jobs, but all I want to do is just be on my board and right. euthanate. Right. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, you, you, people make a good living off of that, dude. Yeah. That's true. Let's, yeah. let's not discourage your boy. Watch the X Games on uh, ESPN. Uh, X Games, yeah. That's what Andrew, Andrew, Andrew about. really, you're going to have to be careful. You could really get hurt with w- that. Where did you get the plant? From a neighbor neighborhood. Is it more? It was in La Mirada. Was it Morning Glory plant? No, they're yellow and they look like bells. And it, did you just go pick them? No, my friend said that if you you, cut, you you take the stems off and like the inside of it, and then you you, you like make you cook it into a like a um, a tea. Right. And it was a tea, and you're supposed to only take one from what people say. But me and this idiot took two, two and a half cups. Right. And dude, it's just I'm okay. still on it right now. Okay, but did you guys go out and pick the plant? Yeah. So you just it just grows wild. It just grows wild. All right, good there's, times. There's gypsum weed. All right, hey Andrew. What's up, Adam? Uh, listen. You need every ounce of your brain to get yourself even a crampy job. <laughs> you understand that concept? Yeah. You, you realize that if you if you concentrate as hard as you can and you put every ounce of effort into it, you're probably just going to get a crampy job. You have to do that. You understand me? Yeah. You got to move out of your parents' house. Get yourself oh. a nice gig. Get nice. a skill. You got to right. do it. Yeah. All right? And, All right. and no more crazy drugs. No, nah, dude. All right. See, what people don't understand is that he's going to come down from this, and he'll be at increased yeah. risk of real serious depressions. And imagine this guy depressed. He's never going to get off the couch. Yeah. They'll find, they'll find the springs growing into his ass after a few <laughs> months. I mean, they really will. Hey, you could really disable he said him. That, first off, I don't, know if, I don't know if furniture has springs in it anymore. At this guy's house? Think about it. Oh, <laughs> probably. That's true. It's probably, no. Are you kidding? They're still in the horse hair <laughs> era. They haven't even it's hit hay, the spray. Hay. It's filled with hay. Beanbag chair. His grandmother has a brand new sofa from 1937 that has horse hair in it. Oh, these headphones are driving me insane now. I, I don't know what to do. Should I... Uh, are they shorten out on you? Yeah. 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 I get all that. Do you uh, want to switch? It's not, I, don't, I don't get distracted. I, I don't know if it's my headphones or it, it was my mic. Jack. It was My mic was screwed up. Well, let me try minutes. your headphones. Yeah. Are you ready? All right. All right. Go. You, you tell me what that sounds right. like. swap. Uh, hey, Wayne, I'll change uh, your headphones. This thing. No way. Yeah, is it bad? Come on. Yeah, you took the first Plug it over there on your side. So uh, I just have this uh, <sighs> uneaten piece of biscotti. Ah, uh, there we go. Thank thank God. This is working fine now. Oh, it is? Uh, yeah. Yeah, my jack's bad then. All right. Is, is there a problem over there? And I rarely say jack and bad in the same sentence, but this is uh, one time I'm going to make an exception. But this is marginally better. All right, let's talk to uh, Jimmy. He's 21. Jimmy? Yeah. What's up? Um, I had a question for uh, Tony and Wayne. Uh, basically, with the sound, uh, your, all your uh, programming and stuff, and your music, uh, the drum loops and stuff like that, I want to know what kind of equipment and who does that in your band. Uh, we have these midgets that uh, sit behind uh, the drum riser, and they play all the samples and, and all that stuff. That works, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good times, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> That's the answer? Quick. You don't want them ripping, them, <laughs> ripping you off? What? No, I, I'm I'm so distracted uh, on this horrible uh, oh, yeah switch, Westwood switch. one Jack. No. <laughs> well, while well, well, you guys switch headphones again or whatever, I'll, I'll give them. I want to give them the real the answer. straight answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I use uh, an Akai MPC 2000 sampler. It's pretty popular for anyone yeah. who's into that crap. And um, you know, I, I just sample keyboard things off keyboards or you know noises off whatever movies, whatever you know, and just sort of manipulate it and. Do whatever I want, whatever I want with it, you know. Put it together. Right. What's the device on the cover of your album this time? Uh, that's our logo, and we just kind of made it into this sort of half organic, half machine kind of thing. And, okay. and I, I'm not really sure what all those it had no historical details are, medieval there. meaning or anything. No, no, it's something we just kind of came up with. Something just pooped out. <laughs> Karen, <laughs> yeah, you're uh, you're 19. What's up? Um, I got a question. I just started dating this guy, and um, when I was sleeping next to him, I woke up because he was wrestling around and found out he was masturbating next to me. Mm-hmm. And I've never had anything like this happen before, and I heard your show a couple days ago where a woman said that she had her boyfriend actually ejaculate on her. Right. Well, I asked him if he would, if he was, like, ever going to or not, if he ever felt like he could. He says... Like, he told me his excuse was, is that he knows when he's going to, but he doesn't know that he's masturbating, so I don't know how that's possible. Are you worried about this? Um, it kind of bothers me, because I've never had anybody do this, and I don't know if it's normal. He told me his other girlfriends knew that he's, that he's done this with his other girlfriends. Well, like, do you have sex with them? No. Well, well, you know, may, well, dating. well, maybe that's why. Are you, are you sleeping in the same bed with him? 
Huh? You're sleeping in the same bed with him? Yeah. How's that work? How's that work? We just started dating, so, I mean, I'm not one that just jumps right onto him. I know, but why are you sleeping? Well, at least give him a hand job. I mean, if you're sleeping with the guy, come on. Give give the guy a break. (laughs) I guess that's my fault. I am neglecting, but I still think it's kind of weird because he told me, too. I was like, was it because... Oh, yeah, he should at least, like, run to the bathroom. What what did he say? What did he say? Hold on a second. (laughs) I'd really like to take this moment to discuss the stupidity of our callers, (laughs) which is, I'm, I'm, I'm saying... I'm saying... You just started dating this guy. You're not sleeping with him. Why stay in the Why same are you sleeping? Yeah, right. What's with the sleepover aspect of the relationship? No, I don't think she understands what that. Is she has. She yeah. she does not think gotta, that's we, strange we or peculiar at all, yeah. and has uh, no idea why anyone would be asking that question. Yeah, so, I've jumped into relationships like that with other guys, and I end up getting no, over Karen. Well, Karen, that's not the question. You're kind of jumping the gun by. Sp- you know, sleeping in the same bed. Right. Isn't that sort of inappropriate? Well, he lives about half hour away from me, so we don't get to see each other very often. So it's like we have yeah, our still, weekend. Yeah, still, but you're half hour by together. jet copter or by car? By car. Half hour is nothing. It's not very far. Yeah. <laughs> half hour. I, I, I drove for an hour to get here. We live yeah. A half, yeah, live half hour in the studio. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I'm here every goddamn like, night. Yeah, it's like going to work or something. I'll tell you, Karen really knows how to drive a point home, though, doesn't <laughs> He does live like 18 miles from my house, so... <laughs> What, and what's he have? A moped or a donkey? What's what's so, he used for transportation? Just his car. He has a car. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even rollerblades, they take you so, an hour. So you're saying if this guy has, if you guys have an 8 o'clock date, he well, has he to be. on the other side of the border, too. Right. He has to be in his car by 730? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. All right, he lives on the other side of the border? Yeah. You're right. in Michigan. Right. Oh, he's he's, in, he's Canada. in Canada. Yes. Oh, he's Canadian. That explains yeah. a lot of stuff. Does he have trouble getting back and forth? He has to deal that, with the border. That explains his deviant. Well, it's not that he works too. So it's the fact that his job and then me coming over. So it's just the fact that we just spend the weekends together. And All right, but how about sleeping in separate areas? How long have you been yeah. dating? Um, only almost probably three weeks. You're giving him confusing messages, and his physiology is responding accordingly. Right. Well, see, the thing is, with how you guys say that it's because of the fact that I'm not sleeping with him. Well, his other girlfriend slept with him right away, and yet he still did it with them. No, Karen, it, it, that's not even the issue. We're, we're just saying this whole situation is sort of flawed. Mm-hmm. It, it's 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 not appropriate for you to be sleeping in the same bed with him, and, and he's going to do what he's going to do, and that's that. But you should be, if you're creating a boundary there, and you don't want to get going in that direction, then do that. <laughs> don't don't sort of extend him down the path yeah. and then expect him to stop the truck, make, you know, the, the uh, train in his make tracks. Him sleep on the couch. Uh, on, yeah. on the other hand, this guy is uh, sh- diabolical. Uh, yeah, this early, you know, there's that part of the dating process where you don't want them to know what kind of asshole you really are. <laughs> it's usually the first couple of months. Yeah. Like all that deviant crap you do, that thing I do where I cut my hand and I fart into it and then I wave it into my mouth and stuff. I didn't. You were actually able to withhold that for a few months? I didn't start that until like uh, week number five or six. Oh, it must have been so tough for you. Well, there's a window because if you go too long, then you can't do it. And it's weird. You understand? Yeah. So you got you to start somewhere between week five and week nine, but that's in the book. I'll get into that <laughs> later. My dating do's and don'ts. <laughs> I'll tell you the fu- I'll, I'll tell you the funniest thing I ever I ever did with my girlfriend. I I love this story. I was uh, I was driving my car. It was a couple months in the relationship, and uh, driving down to Moore Park uh, Boulevard over here in uh, Toluca Lake, and I let a big rip a big one, and uh, I'm driving the car, and I do the hand flap thing where I'm I'm wafting it up uh, toward my face with the hand. And she, she's disgusted, and she's sitting in the passenger seat, and she says, uh, Jesus Christ, do you have to do the thing with the hand? Do you have to flap it up to, toward your face? And I look at her, and I go, I am driving this car. Do you want me to put my head between my legs while I'm driving? Do you understand that we could go off the road and get ourselves both killed and use your head? Did she get defense? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Sorry. I oh, delivered right. it in the straightest, most angry <laughs> way. <laughs> What'd she do? Safety conscious. <laughs> What'd she do? She just uh, looked like uh, like a deer in the headlights for about two beats, and then I started laughing like I just a <laughs> madman. And then you locked the windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Jimmy's move. Jimmy locks the windows, and then I uh, open the car door to try to you know get some air in there, and then he started locking the car door, too, and turns the heat on, by the way. That's uh, another <laughs> one of his uh, big moves. All right, so what was this? Karen is... Uh, Karen, what... 
what what you're doing is a little bit weird sleeping with the guy you're not sleeping with, and what he's doing is a little bit weird too. So create create a more appropriate, a clearer boundary with this guy if you don't want it to start going that direction. Right? Feel Mine's more neglect, and his is more satisfying himself from the neglect. Well, no, just, you're, not, you're not hearing us he, at all. He's trying to send a message too. When guys beat off, it's like, see what you're making me do. I didn't want it to come to this, but it, look what it's come to. And you, you're well, it was the fact that I was in his sleep because I even like rolled him over, and he was still just sleeping. Well, listen, he, he you may have got his engine running pretty pretty high gear, he's, but he's a catch. But the dude, point, yeah, I know. Hang he's on to all, him with all, both hands, all style. And but, uh, wrap yourself in visqueen before you another visqueen. Right, <laughs> listen, Karen, you just create that boundary and set it and that's fine but don't be unclear about it sleeping in the same bed with him is very mixed message yeah, if you, you, tease. you take your average 19 20 year old canadian especially they're super <laughs> horny those guys and, and loaded and you you give them you give them a few drinks and you screw around get to second or third base and then say uh no release though it's time to go to bed and he goes to bed right next to him right next to him and uh, you feel that warm body uh, right in, right against the groin. Every t- nineteen or twenty year old guy is going to do something in the course of the evening. I don't know if it's sliding a hand up somewhere. I don't know if it's touching their, themselves. Rest assured, something will go on in in that evening. Jessica, hi Adam and Drew. Hey, hey Jessica. It's so nice to finally talk to you. Nice to talk to you too. Say What's hi that? to Tony and Wayne from Static X, by the way. Oh, hey Tony. Hey and Wayne. Anyway, I've been uh, trying for the past... She doesn't to, like you. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, I've been trying for the past week to break my hymen so right. my voice would drop and I could sound older. All right, hold on. Hold on here. We need to examine this one, but after the break. This a girl? Yeah. She wants her voice <laughs> to drop? No, it's a boy with a hymen. She wants, her, hymen. Vo- she wants yeah. her voice to drop? I didn't know the hymen, hymen was break. connected to the vocal We'll voice. find out what she's thinking. All right, we'll uh, take a break. Back with Static X after this. Hey everybody, Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla, that uh, B Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. System of a Down, Henry Rollins. And Jerry Manthe from uh, Survivor 2 and uh, Long Beach Dub All Stars. Oh, those Long Beach Dub All Stars. I'm going to take a nap before we do that show. Yeah, their work. <laughs> it's like having the uh, Insane Clown Posse in here, isn't it? Yeah, there's certain bands, uh, not Static X, but uh, certain bands in here where you really, you really earn your money. Long Beach Dub All Stars, uh, they're always drunk and uh, rambunctious, and uh, God knows, we might, we'll probably take three calls. <laughs> 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 we really will, uh, but good guys, nice guys. Yeah, I'm just saying because I don't want any crap. Uh, for good guys, good guys, I love them. Love them like, good guys. love them like brothers. Yeah, we have a saying, you know, when we talk about anybody, whether you're talking good or crap about them, you always follow it with, but they're nice guys. <laughs> nice guys. <laughs> nice guys. Nice, nice guys. Uh, Static X here. Uh, nice Machine. guys. Nice guys. Machine is the uh, name of the CD, and uh, we'll hear something else off of that in a few minutes. Uh, let's get back to Jessica on line 516. Jessica? Hi, Adam. Hey. Hey. If I may take a moment. Yes, you I may. I just realized something. Mm-hmm. Sunday night, I'm going to be watching the man show. Thank I'm you. I'm going to be thinking to myself, I talked to this man. Yeah. Right. What an honor. Oh, right, it is. I'm going to watch it. And I'll be thinking. I'm going to give this man a hand job in about uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, what's well, up? So, Jessica, you wanted to adjust your anatomy to change your voice. Exactly. Help me understand how that works. Well, I heard people talk about how after you break your hymen, or maybe after you give birth, or various, you know biology changing aspects of your life they release endorphins or hormone hormones growth hormones or something mm-hmm. and they could help your your voice break grow older or your boobs get bigger i don't know no, it's true no, no. or uh now my no, sister you, you my, my sister sounded like Minnie mouse and then her hymen broke and she sounded like brenda vaccaro <laughs> i swear to christ it's so true uh, you know what? When I was when I was your age, I had heard that you know, it, uh, if you put your penis in a vacuum, it'll like make it bigger. Right. It didn't work. It didn't. <laughs> Adam heard about a Spanish fly and about yeah. some girl that killed herself. With true that. story. Yeah. True story. My uh, friend Carl, his older brother Kurt, dating this chick, you know, and he gave her some Spanish fly, you know, 
and he just met her at this club, and, and he went in to stop at a uh, convenience store at a 7-Eleven to grab some condoms because she was so horny, and he ran in just to get the condoms and the six-pack. When he came out, she would killed herself. She would impaled herself on the stick shift of the car trying to have sex with True her. story. True story. <laughs> that horny. Sp- yeah. yeah, Spanish fly. So so the, mor- totally the moral cool. of the story is have condoms. He yeah. did her anyway. That was the kind of guy he was. Ah, necrophilia. So the moral of the story is don't believe what you hear when you're 13. <laughs> okay? That's what we're trying to tell you. Oh. All right, but Jessica, what's up with the uh, crazy part? All right, what's up with you? You seem yeah. kind of nutty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always, yeah, when you give that mad scientist <laughs> laugh, it always it always smacks of guilt, too. Okay. Like, like okay, you, pull, you, you got me. You got me. That's right. <laughs> Oh, my God. It's a Muttley, too. Muttley. I'm sorry. I'm a little, you know, high. Yeah. What's but up? Reminds me of somebody. Are you crazy? Well, I'm trying to... The thing is, I'm trying to front a band. I see. And I have to sound older. Okay, what, what's the name of the band? I can't tell you that. Really? She's up there in Montana. Yeah. You know, every, Everyone will know who I am then. Yeah. Do you play an instrument? I play the guitar. I see. And why do It's free promotion Yeah, why don't you give a, give a plug to the band? Oh, can't everyone will know who I am? Okay, uh, okay. and then, right. and then they'll go, and then they'll come see your band, and isn't that what you want? Right. Do you want me to play the guitar for you? Yeah. All right, hold on. I'll see if I can. Do you guys? The... Do you have? Do you cover any songs? Huh? Do you cover um, songs? I'll play you a song that I wrote myself. It's I won't sing the lyrics because copyright stuff. I don't want anyone to steal it. But I'll play the guitar. Sure. No, I know you got to protect. You got to protect your art, man. I sure do. Hey, can, do you know "Hell Is for Children" by Pat Benatar? Huh? Okay. Hold on a second, Who's Jesse. Pat you, you plug that amp in. <laughs> That's my big karaoke number, by the way. The <laughs> "Hell Is for Children" <laughs> really brings song. brings the house yeah. down. Yeah. Brock. So, Grandpa, you fell off the swing because hell. <laughs> I dedicated to my parents before. I do a lot of talking in, in the middle of it. It's it's heavy. It's yeah. it's moving. Not a dry eye in the house, but I'm done. Hey, uh, Jay. Yeah, hello. Yeah, we're going to talk to you for a minute while uh, crazy Jessica plugs in her amp. You're okay. 14. What's up? Yeah, I just want to say all you guys are great, especially you, Adam. You're a god. Thank you. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I told the guy I had a different question, but right. I thought of something a little more important than I wanted to ask you. All right. Well, I was making out with this girl the other day, mm-hmm. and I got it, like, not like a boner, but, like, barely up, and I started leaking, and I've noticed that every single time I make out with a girl or get, like, close to him, mm-hmm. this happens, and I don't know what the hell is going on. That's normal. It's called premature ejaculation. Yeah, just be, be aware that if that, if you decide to put your penis in someone, that it's fully loaded and uh, leaking. Well, I don't even have a boner, so how could it be like premature ejaculation? It is. Well, well, no, no, no. It, you ever see American true. Pie? Th- this oh, is yeah. leaking. I mean, it's not. It's like not an, yeah, orgasm, an orgasm, orgasm, but it, it's, it's leaking dripping. Semen, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, that's not what you would traditionally think of as premature ejaculation. No, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. It's pre. It's. It's. I. I didn't. No, no. It's the uh, pre ejaculate. Right. Right. And uh, some guys have a uh, bad gasket, and that's you, Jay. Oh, okay. Your dad's probably a dribbler. Ask him about it. it uh, <laughs> Does that mean like... Right for Easter. Thanksgiving, yeah. Does that mean I'm only going to be able to go for like 30 seconds or something? No, it doesn't. No, it, it just means that you can get a chick pregnant without having an orgasm because of your penis uh, dribbles. You see okay. what I'm saying? You get that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Yeah, just uh, stuff something down there. Yeah, okay. Look uh, a uh, roll of uh, bounty Orchid. down there or something. That's what I do. Yeah, sure. Yeah, put, a, man, a man pond. Yeah, put a man pond uh, <laughs> up there. Man, man that man up urethra. Lives. Yeah. Shouldn't they make a small urethra-sized tampons, Drew? You yeah, know what I mean? This is another one of your ideas. that Would not hurt. I'd put one of those in. Urination, semen, what have you. Just a uh, drip. Maybe have an infection. There's something coming out of there. Why ruin a pair of slacks? Jessica? Hi, Adam. Oh, Penny pads. You got your... Uh, you got your amp plugged in? I sure do. Okay, okay hold on. What? Can you hear that? Yeah, sure can. What's the name? Now, is there a song that you can do that we know of? Can you cover a song? Well, have you heard of Speeding Up the Slow Down from Better Than Ezra? Uh, That's I know. one of my favorite ones. All right, I know Better Than Ezra, but I, I'm talking more like, you know, uh, MacArthur Park or something, you know. Led something Zeppelin. we can all sing to. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. The do, classics. Uh, how about... Walk on the Ocean from Toe the Wet Sprock. All right, that 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 I know. I know that song. Okay, it, are it, you ready? it's going to be a tall order. Go ahead. Hey, I could sing this one. Go ahead. Right? Do All Walk right. on the Ocean. Here we go. Okay. 
We'll decide whether she needs to change her voice, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And a one. We spotted the ocean. Actually, you know what? At That's the right head of the song. trail. Right? Here we go. Where are we going? Okay. Right, right, right. Let me play my own song, because I forgot how to play that, okay? Okay. All right. Is it right? possible that you never knew how to play it? I knew. I just, I forgot completely. Uh, okay. Okay, ready? Right. This is a ridiculous show. Because hell. (laughs) Hell is for children. Jessica? Second verse, same as the first. All right, everybody. Now, just just the boys. All right, shall we see if she's still going on? Yeah. Uh, Let's check back in like five minutes. Okay. Yeah, she needs a lower voice. Her voice is so high, I can't even hear it. <laughs> yeah. Only dogs can hear it. All right, time for Static X song. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I, I well, We got to keep going back. <laughs> this is like a bad sore. Right? Oh, she stopped. Jessica? I shortened it up because I knew your guys are kind of busy, so... Right, right. Yeah. Uh, hey, do, do she you... She gave s- us the radio edit. Do you have one where you sing? I the, I have lyrics to that song, but I can't. Are you a masochist? Uh, huh? No, I, I just... I'm trying to get her... She wants to change her voice. I'm trying to figure out whether she should or not. Do you want me to sing? All right, Jessica, you hang on. We have to hear band. We have to hear a professional band, all right? Okay, Jessica. All right. Yeah. All right, hang on. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> now, I, I just want to find out. Jessica, I think, is nutty, right? Yeah. Is she nuts? Yeah, yeah. You think, you think she's a big gal? Do you uh, get that big gal vibe from I her? Don't know she's that. just a, a little girl. She's having fun, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, she's probably a little nervous. Yeah. You know, it's all good. Jessica? Yes? You a big gal? Uh, actually, I've lost a lot of weight. I used to be heavy, but. All right. All right. Okay. Not, you, yeah, you're I down. Yeah. One fifty. How tall right. are you? I'm five one. All right, let me do the radio math there. Hold on a second. Five one one fifty. Do the radio math. Carry the five. Four eleven one sixty eight. Yeah, I did the uh, radio math. We're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. Then we're going to come back. We'll hear something from Static X, and uh, wait, hopefully wait, wait, wait. Uh, we're going to hear. No, a break. Let's Static take a break. Right. Yeah, we'll take a break. We'll hear something from Static X. And, uh, and maybe uh, maybe another Toad the Wet Sprocket song from Jessica <laughs> after this. Hello, this is your radio. radio. Loveline will be right back. Loveline, everybody. Static X is our guest. Machine is the name of the CD. And let's hear ourselves a song off of that CD. What's right it called? Away. This one is called This Is Not.
was uh, that was Static X from the uh, Doctor Demento uh, Static X <laughs> Army. Drew and I just had a weird little spell <laughs> Very there. Very weird. Very strange. Flashback. Very strange. Yes. All right. Uh, Machine is the name of the CD. Please go out and get it. It. Uh, you don't have to though. It's already been shipped gold, but. Uh, <laughs> It would, you know, it'd be nice. But it put a smile. On I'm doing face. it for yeah, but for you, not for the band. Yeah, Travis. Yeah. <clears throat> you're 19. What's up? Yeah, actually, um, I got a question, or see if you guys can help me out with this. Um, I've known this girl for about four years now. She just got done with a, a bad relationship. Her ex boyfriend treated her, I mean, pretty much like dirt. And you're um, looking to swoop in. Yeah, you're gonna save her. No, it's it's, it's not that. I mean, I don't know. I've I've found myself attracted to her and i tried to keep it friends but i mean i just think i want a little bit more out of it did you say you had lived with her for four years is that what i heard you say i've known her for four years i went to school with her Uh i lived around her for okay you think she has an interest in you see that's that's what i don't know because i mean i've I've talked to her about my feelings and everything and how i feel towards her hold on one second travis this is just again one of those things where men and women are so different she's a downer luck He's like he's like a bird of prey coming in on a small Vulture. animal. While a woman, if a guy is down on his luck, kick him in the nuts and yeah. laugh. Yeah, laugh yeah. like Isn't a. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, she's down. She's easy. Oh, I, I'm interested now. Yeah, yeah. As a guy, there's nothing you'd like more than to see some hot looking chick whose lo- whose self esteem's at all time low that you can swoop in on. Uh, yes, please, Wayne. Yeah. Don't take no, that moral no, high ground. No, <laughs> you're, you're, no, no. You know what? It's, 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 it's better to have a girl that has self-esteem than. Oh, it is. Of course, it but, is. But, no, but, no. Men, but like, when you're thinking just short term, man. I guess you know, she's uh, easy, men, easy prey. Men right. go for that. Men yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Women, women are completely shut down by it, and men are sort of uh, right they, enamored with. They it. sense your pain and try to increase it. Yeah. Right. All right. So anyway, Travis. Yeah. You told her how you felt, and she said what. She actually told me, because this was about three uh, months ago when she just first broke uh, up with yeah. her boyfriend. Yeah. She said she needed more time. Right. I don't know if that was one of those lame excuses. Yes, it is. Yes. No. So, yes. Lame. Well, but then it might have been an excuse built on her intention to get back with her old boyfriend. Okay. Right. You can try try one more time, Travis. So try one more time. But yeah. only once more. Just once. Once more. And I suggest you go in asking for a date. Yeah, you have a real date in mind. Yeah, don't talk th- this in this sort of Abstraction, theory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it possible that one day you might like me? No, no talk about we what's have, going on. We have this concert weekend. tickets. Let's go. Yeah, because I mean, I, I've been nothing but the kindest person to her. Nah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Travis, come on, Travis, Travis. Yeah. yeah, listen to me. Here's the deal, and uh, I think you guys would all agree with this. No matter what she says the next time you talk to her, there's a certain bottom line. She's Either a, you're going out with her or you're, not. or you're not. She could tell you she's in love with you. She could tell you, you know, you're the greatest guy in the world. Right now, I'm not ready. Whatever it is, there's a certain bottom line. It, it, it's like, it's like do, you're, going in for, uh, you're going in for an interview. Do you get the job or not? That's I don't right. care what the boss says. Do you get the job or not? If you don't get the job... Move on. Then words are completely useless. Guys, please understand that because women, they don't, no one wants to say, look, you're ugly, you're fat, I'm not into you, you have a small penis, your breast smells, I, I'm not attracted to you. It's uncomfortable. No, they go, no, you're a great guy. No, I'm in, I'm in love with you. I'm not in love with you, but I'm I, in I love, love with you. you. My best I love friend. you. My best I love friend. You. You're great. No, one day. And then the guys start feeding them lines. Well, do you think one day, maybe sometime, there might be a change? Well, sure, one day down the road. And then that's enough for the guy to build I, I, a dream I just need on. some time right. now, just now. And I just broke up right. 12 months ago. Right. Nonsense. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk to Jessica again before we finish? <laughs> oh, <up>? right. <laughs> Jessica. Still there. <laughs> See, the band's going. She just got off a tour, actually. Hi, Jessica? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I just found that tablature for a walk on the ocean. If you're still interested, yeah. Let's hear some. We don't play enough toad the wet sprocket oh on God. this, and I know, I know, it's static. A, you know, it's a I damn shame. Hear too. That. They I, were the greatest band of the early nineties. Static was. Uh, static X was heavily they're, influenced by toad, as they yeah, call it. Very, very huge. Well, anyway, you ready? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. We spot in the ocean at the head of the trail. Where are we going? It's not exactly a tone problem. So far you know I mean? away. Deepening the voice may not correct right. some of those things. Somebody told 
It's my a little I, more of a pitch thing. I think Toad the Wet Sprocket had it right, and they're very poetic when they sung Where Are We Going? Prophetic, I think. Prophetic, is the, yeah. yes. Damn it, hold on. Okay. Oh, okay. Right, hang on a second. <laughs> you hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, there must have been an agent calling or something on the other line. Yeah. Matt? Labels knocking her door. Hey, Matt? That's right. Matt? Yeah. You're 36. What's going on? Hey, guys. What's happening? Nothing. What's happening? Uh, just sitting here. I got a question for you. Um, been dating this girl for about two months. Long distance relationship. We've hooked up about three times. I've known her since we were like 13, 14 years old. Real comfortable with her. Um, but I want to get her to uh, do a little trimming down there. And uh, we're going to see each other in, in like 10 days. So I want to give her, you know, some warning. But I don't know if it's going to, you know, she's a, kind of a little insecure. So I don't want to, like, make a big deal out of it. What was How the preamble he said? They know each other. known her for 20 years? Oh, yeah. I've known her for a long time. And now you're going to start dating her, or you have been dating her? He has been. Well, we've kind of we've hooked up over the years, but she lives she lives in uh, another state, and uh, she, she's coming out to stay with you. It. She lives by some relatives. What's that? And you want her to trim her pubes? Yeah. Are they out of control? And they're not horrible, but they're you know I like it you know. Well, 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 and she trims she trims up and everything for a bikini. And what, when's the last time you saw her pubes? Okay. Um, 1974. Uh, I'd rather hear Jessica sing. No. <laughs> When? <laughs> they might have grown since then. No, two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. We hooked right. up in the last two months. Hey, you dating. want it, you want her to trim it down? Yeah. Get, get yourselves one, one of those portable shavers, you know, and then while you're down there, just she he get wants it done. he wants her to myself. he wants her to trim <laughs> yeah. it off before she comes out there. Exactly. Yeah. Why don't you do? Why don't you call her up, do a little dirty talk, and start like talking fantasies, you know? Yeah, and they go like, "Yeah, I like a girl with a nice little runway down that I can land okay. my tongue on." Right. Yeah, you, 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 you get into that like dirty yeah. talk, and you and Matt keep talking respond. after off the air. That's fine. All right, or maybe Jessica can uh, compose a song <laughs> yeah, asking her to trim her pubes. We'll be back. Love line, love line, one eight hundred love one nine one. Back in a minute. Well, there you go. Another uh, fabulous uh, episode of Love Line in the Ground. Next week, uh, System of a Down, Henry Rollins, Jerry Matthew from uh, Survivor 2, Long Beach Dub All-Stars. I want to thank uh, Static X for coming in here. Mainly uh, Tony and Wayne from the band. <laughs> yeah, thanks yeah, for having yeah, us again. those other guys. Machine, uh, name of the CD, out in stores now. Look for them uh, coming to a town near you and uh, also on the Family Values Tour. I want to thank uh, Ken, our uh, substitute engineer, right? Is that right? We got that right. See? I told you, Drew. Good times. Doing a great job for Anderson uh, all week. And uh, producer Ann for putting her feminine stink on the show and booking the guests. And uh, Damien, the uh, bald wonder, for doing a great job on the phone. So, until next time. Oh, and uh, who else am I missing? To Lauren. Lauren, yes. And Lauren for doing a great job bringing the dog in, having it uh, <laughs> cry hump everyone's red legs. Red rocket, red rocket, red rocket. So, until next time, Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying... Mahal. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.